Hello and welcome again to the Rider Review. This is Eric Karat Rider, and this week we're going to be taking a look back at the 1990 movie titled Ghost. Now, the movie Ghost is a mix between drama, romance, fantasy, maybe even a touch of horror. Yeah, this movie pretty much has it all in terms of genres, so for anybody of any particular taste, this movie pretty much has all you would expect. Uh, the movie runs for something like a little over two hours long. Two hours and ten minutes long, I think. I'm not exactly 100% sure. But it's somewhere around that parameter. It is directed by Jerry Zucker. It is produced by Lisa Weinstein. The script was written by Academy Award winning writer uh, Bruce Joel Rubin. The cinematography was done by Adam Greenberg and the editing was done by Walter Murch. And the stars of the movie are Patrick Swayze, Demi Moore, Academy Award winning actress Whoopi Goldberg, she took home the Best Supporting Actress and a well-deserved one at that. I'm probably going to be very biased towards Whoopi Goldberg because I got a lot to say about her in this review. Um, Tony Goldwyn is in it. Uh, Rick Aviles, Vincent Ciavalli, uh, Augie Blunt, and Phil Leeds are also starring in this movie as well. Uh, even though the film world has made this 1990 movie Ghost as being insignificant, inferior to other movies that came out in this time period, but to me, Whoopi Goldberg's Oda Mae Brown could easily pass off as one of the most near-perfect, intriguing, mesmerizing characters to ever be featured on celluloid. I mean, her character has truly exceeded any character that Charles Dickens or William Shakespeare ever created. Goldberg literally sold her character, and when she graced the screen with her performance, people were just dying to see her in such a dynamic performance, and definitely who could blame them. With the 1980s coming to a close, we had the honors to reflect what a decade it has been in the era of filmmaking. Some of the great creative minds emerged from this occasion. It was a time when thinking and direction was compatible. There were very few lazy remakes or CGI green screen dependency. It was originality and creativity all the way. And there was no competition to see how much money you can make in one day. Artists like Robert Greenwald were creating artful flicks like Xanadu and Ridley Scott was making an original modern day fairy tales like Legend. No one expected that the 1990s would come along with such a plethora of bummer films. Not all of them, but a lot of them. It was like the creativity was lost. The colorful and spontaneous dynamics were badly watered down with blandness and half-baked films that were only out there. The only film of the 1990s that had the charm that was lost in the 80s was actually the 1996 movie of Vita. While the 1990s crept up with its grunge, baggy clothes, and other societal lowerings, the time to have something to embrace on was eagerly anticipated. So while cinema was going on the decline, 1990 did provide a gem that will eternally be etched in the hearts of many because everyone has already figured out this film was going to be special because we were getting tired of the grading films that were hitting the box office. This film was selling faster than hotcakes. This was definitely clearly Jerry Zucker's best directed film, no matter what. 
he never exceeded his expectations. This film definitely has everything to offer. Great acting all around. Not just Whoopi Goldberg, but Patrick Swayze and Demi Moore and Tony Goldwyn were also good. Excellent, smaller, lesser supporting, but still very significant performances from Rick Avilas and uh, Vincent Schiavelli. There was a few chuckles, a lot of, you know, low-key humor that was not, you know, toilet humor or any other of that kind of shit like that. Yes, there were a few cries, a lot of sad moments, especially in the end. If the end does not bring a tear to your eyes, I don't know what the hell does. Either that, or you're just all fucked in the brains. But the score was definitely excellent. And I gotta give a hats off to Maurice Jarre for creating such an enlightening score. I mean, this movie score is probably one of the best that was ever provided and I don't think anything could ever get past us this one it's really really totally out of this world I mean you know I know something I love the oldies and one of the most beautiful ballads of its time was Unchained Melody by the Righteous Brothers who, by the way, were not really brothers. They were a duo that consisted of the soulful, almost falsetto-sounding voice of the late, great Bobby Hetfield and the soothing uh, baritone bass voice of Bill Medley. If that song won't have you slow dancing with a partner, I don't know what will. Even the special effects though low-key deserve mentioning. And the special effects were not like overly done like in other movies. This one really truly showed that you don't have to go over the top in your special effects to demonstrate great storytelling. This movie has special effects in it, but it's used in a subtle, nuanced fashion. It's used only when it needs to. So I gotta give hats off to Zucker and the special effects department on that. Even though Ghost is worthy of all its accolades, it may s surprise you that with the powerful big budget films that were coming out in the 1990s, like Mermaids, The Little Mermaid, Goodfellas, Dances with Wolves, amongst many others. Goodfe uh, Ghost was probably one of the biggest budgeted films that year. But was still the underdog in the Academy Awards department. It was still overlooked. What made this film, of course, stand out the most was definitely the performance of Whoopi Goldberg as Oda Mae Brown. She plays the role as a, as a pseudo-sidekick who has been ripping off people with her phony with her phony beliefs that she could see the dead and that she could communicate with the dead only to realize that when she speaks to Sam, the deceased Sam Wheat played by Patrick Swayze her phoniness eventually ends up becoming a reality as he tries to warn his surviving lover Molly Jensen played by Demi Moore that if she doesn't communicate with Molly sooner 
her life will be in grave danger. And only he could, and he, only he and his undying love is the only thing that could protect her. I mean, there's also a suspense thriller in this film, too. I mean, I have to say the other performances were also very good, too. The late Patrick Swayze, though not as effective as his role in Dirty Dancing. Dirty Dancing will always be his baby. He was quite effective in his role. Demi Moore. This was probably like one of the last of her great roles before she skidded off into mediocrity. She was quite effective as the as the endangered ex-girlfriend of Sam. I guess you could say the widowed girlfriend of Sam. She really brings the drama, the romance, and the tension to the film. Tony Goldwyn, he, he made a great convincing role as a one-time friend of Sam, but then turned out to be nothing more than a fucking rat bastard. And, uh, like I said, some, some good smaller appearances from Rick Avilis as, as a junkie, uh, hired assassin named Willie Lopez, who, of course, is, um... Uh, hired by Tony Goldwyn's character Carl to hunt down Molly and to steal some loot from her. Vincent Ciavalli, even though he's on briefly, is also quite effective as the mysterious subway ghost who tries to teach Sam the ins and outs of haunting so you know performance wise everybody was good but nobody stood out as much as Whoopi Goldberg's performance as Oda Mae Brown she was dynamic she practically upstaged everyone She totally sold her character above everyone else. Even the late Patrick Swayze. His baby will always be Dirty Dancing. And Demi Moore, whose career is kind of stalled after this movie. But it was her flair, her charisma, that carries the beat of this movie. She truly stands out like no other performer and she's truly, really is a diamond in the rough. Yes! A big hearty congratulations came out to Whoopi Goldberg for capturing the Best Supporting Actress Oscar and a well-deserved one. And the critics definitely around her chewed that notion. Me included. But their rhetoric is vague and at times not all 100% justified. I agree with them, but I will go even deeper. And to assume that Oda Mae Brown was probably around before we ever even knew who Whoopi Goldberg is. Oda Mae Brown and Whoopi Goldberg are two completely different people. What I'm trying to say is that I'm not the biggest fan of Whoopi Goldberg, though I don't loathe her either. And that this movie and The Color Purple were the two movies that made Whoopi Goldberg a household name. But what I'm saying is, is that I would love to see her make a sequel or even a remake of Ghost. Sure, I mean, I love her and her humanitarian work, that will always be phenomenal. But I just truly miss her acting. And the long-awaited return of Oda Mae Brown gracing the screen is something that I would pay to see. I know in 2010 they spawned a musical based on the movie Ghost. But it's just not the same. 
the actors who played Oda Mae Brown are inferior to the role that Whoopi Goldberg made famous. If I was to give this movie a scale out of 10, oh my god, it's an automatic 10. And I don't give 10s that often. It's really that special. And have you guys missed it? It's never too late. So I guess this ends my writer review, so thank you all for listening in. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe to my channel, please feel free to do so. If you want to leave a comment, do so. Remember, be kind, be courteous, don't be rude, and I will be back again with another movie review. So until next time, this is Eric Corrette Ryder saying keep watching those movies, and I'll see you around. Goodbye.